Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Sentinel One presents ET Studios, redefining cyber security in association with ETC. So, in today's episode, the spotlight is on redefining endpoint security in the remote work era. Our esteemed speakers on the panel today are Divakar Dayal, Sentinel One Managing Director. Hitesh Mulani, Mahindra and Mahindra Group CISO and Bhavesh Lakhani, First Source, EV Pre and Global CIO. A very warm welcome to the three of you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now let's open up the discussion by setting the pace. How has the landscape of endpoint security evolved in response to the increased prevalence of remote work? Sure, you see digital is now very pervasive. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere, right? And as we open up more and more digital uh, in our workspace for internal customers and our external customers, the threat landscape has evolved tremendously. The canvas has just doubled or tripled, right? Because as you must have read, almost 80 to 85% of your uh, malware is entering through your endpoints. And your endpoint also has evolved. It's no longer just your traditional desktop or a laptop, right? It can be a BYOD device, it can be any form. The security around it is more pertinent than before. Hitesh, would love to hear your concerns about the ITOT. And also it's a great time, right, for hackers and even, you know, insider threats, especially as he's talking about the increased threat landscape. Yeah, in the ITOT environment, I think uh, the endpoint because, you know, there was a point of time we would invest a lot in training people. Uh, we still do that, but it's, it's futile. Right, you've got to depend on technology to take care of that piece for you. Uh, so I think we, you know, there's a lot of investment that goes into protecting the endpoint um, and and protecting it wherever. Right, you have developers who are not yours, right, sitting remote. Uh, so there's a whole there's a whole kill chain of you know uh, what you need to implement in order to. It's not just the endpoint, even the entire journey up to the development uh, area. All of that has to be protected. So it's it's all of that and then when you look at the ot side of things uh you know you've got to have a tech that works without being cloud connected you know there's this whole furore around technologies you know who want to be cloud connected all the time but that's not reality right manufacturing pharma none of these environments are ever going to be conceived of things uh you know that uh, endpoint uh endpoint protecting solutions uh, need to take into account, a lot of them don't take into account that there is a manufacturing setup also, there is an OT environment also that needs to be protected and I think there there's a lot more investment that needs to go in uh, into protecting those environments. You know, you provided me the perfect segue to come to S1 because I do know that uh, they have an EDR that works offline, you know, so take it away, Diva. How are you on the cyber defense side addressing all these problems that have come in in the remote work era? I think uh, the last couple of years, given the digital pandemic, we've just moved too fast, right? And I really feel sorry for these respected CISOs, but while IT is trying to keep pace with digital transformation, I think cybersecurity has kind of struggled in terms of uh, really keeping up with that pace, right? And uh, with remote working here to stay for good, uh, I think the with the asset which is to be really protected has now moved away from the perimeter. And we all know that the gold is on the endpoint, right? Uh, but also the endpoint today is one of the most attacked vectors, right? Why? Because it's the easiest, it's the most vulnerable, platforms that can really help you know reduce human dependency but offer the same machine speed in defense in those endpoints that are out everywhere right because I think we've reached a point where uh, a machine speed attack requires a machine speed defense absolutely right yeah because but I'd hate to say that you know we have machine speed defense because the next thing that will happen is I'll be the most attacked <laughs> right, so I wouldn't want to say that. Yeah, you know, that's because like challenging them in the public forum, and as we all know, they syndicate, right? So it's about time that uh, there are, you know, uh, syndication on the good side of the yeah, world, right? Absolutely, but we call that cartelization, right? And then we can call this syndication. I feel the bad guys should have a different term that they've already, you know, uh, that they've already owned. But yeah, what about, be, uh, uh, you know, as they're talking about syndication on the cyber defense side, is there intelligence sharing, Diva, do you think that should increase? 
I think so, right? At the end of the day, uh, security has, you know, uh, in principle, it requires to break the silos, mm -hmm. right? It requires collaboration. It requires uh, people to be trained to kind of come together and not just within organizations and within uh, across departments and organizations, also within the industry. And I think that is why if you look at as a strategy uh, company and I think most mature cybersecurity uh, players would need to embrace an open uh, you know, platform approach, which really helps build what we call best of breed, mm -hmm. right? Versus uh, a single you know, company providing uh, switching, routing, firewalling, cybersecurity, you know, every other tool, which itself becomes a, you know, a point of weakness. So yes, I think there'll be a lot of collaboration that you will see picking up as we move along. I want to address a question to uh, Bhavesh and Hitesh. Now we've moved, moved away from sort of remote work, we've come into hybrid work, which is a blend, right? So where do you feel the breaches occur the most at the end point? In your experience, what have you seen and how? what are the safeguards that you've put in? Well, like you rightly said, hybrid is here to stay. And hybrid is, I mean, endpoint, no doubt, is the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And amongst that too, when you are a remote worker or a work from anywhere, that's where I think the Achilles heel is. And, and to secure that as an organization, we heavily invest in zero trust securities. And by zero trust, it's, you know, the overall care, diverse industries, communication, media, tech. So all the, you cannot have one size that fits all. So the underlying strategy is zero trust. And then there will be layered security, which helps us prioritize and then ensure that nothing gets through ideally. All right, thank you for your insight, Bhavesh. Ahitesh would love to know how you're working on it. As far as endpoints go, uh, you know, you see most breaches coming uh, from the remote environment, especially uh, if the whole strategy around, you know, how you protect an endpoint hasn't been thought of correctly. Um, I think a lot of us, when COVID hit, uh, you know, rushed into remote working because it was a necessity. But I'm just saying we all were lucky we didn't get hit there. Mm -hmm. Because all of us were on VPNs. We'd given desktops and laptops to people to take home. And uh, they weren't fully secure. Because they were protected in an environment where everybody was coming to office. Right? And when they started working remotely, you needed, uh, you know, everything from your proxy to become a cloud proxy, which no one had. Everyone was on-prem. Uh, they did not have strategies to protect the data once or the machine once it left the office. It took us almost a year to get there and make it perfect. There was no proper uh, DLP in a lot of companies, right? But, uh, and, and I would say we're still not there because there's no perfect anti-ransomware solution so far. Uh, which is a dream come true for all of us. But uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the reality is that, uh, you know, we are uh, not in a perfect world. We have perpetrators and, and let's face it, it's a reality that most of these are, uh, you know, uh, funded by nation states. Uh, it's not it's not possible for them to be so strong, uh, you know, by themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is a lot of funding. There's all a lot of terrorist funding. There's a lot being done to get uh, the overall strategy right around protection of the nation and the entities within the nation, right? And and uh, you know a lot of our companies fall into critical infrastructure mm -hmm. companies in terms of and when I say critical infrastructure, it's not hard structures, right? It's it's pharma, it's uh, you know services, it's financial companies, it's uh, you know, everything that's holding the country up, uh, in our case, it's our cars because the 50% of the fleet in the defense and in the home is uh, from us. And so, uh, you know, given that we're all part of critical infrastructure, it becomes that much more important for us to have uh, to collaborate and build the right strategies. And, and I think, you know, forums like these where we meet each other also help in terms of knowledge sharing. Uh, I hate it when you know, I go to a conference and CISOs are speaking about the same thing over and over again. But that also means that your job continuously keeps evolving. Absolutely. And for you to have that sort of compliance with the new rules, uh, you know, how do you ensure that happens with the existing software or technology that you have? It's very important for us to find the right tools, right? And like uh, Diva alluded to earlier, it's always a catch-up game. We went 
digital uh, lock, stock and barrel since 2020. But the security companies, especially around what Hitesh alluded to, uh, be it a malware, ransomware, we are just doing a catch up game. And it's, it's continuously uh, being on your toes, right? And the reason being, it could be a dormant one, which is sitting for the last two years, brewing and waiting for, to, uh, for it to be explored, right? So, so this is where you need to first invest in the right tools. And it's, it's never, uh, I would say, also doing, uh, like you alluded to earlier, threat intelligence uh, sharing. And that's where it's time for the industry and feedback for Divar and ownership here. It's no longer a CISO or CIO's responsibility. It has to start right from the top. And when that ownership and accountability comes, I think that's where companies uh, can, you know, mitigate some of these risks. But it's never 100%. And I, I'll... I'll ask Diva, can he guarantee me if we use one tool versus the other or even if an array of tools, yeah. it's not guaranteed. I think that would be their dream, right Diva? Can you ever you know, come to that 100% sort of reassurance? There was this, uh, I don't want to name people, but one of the US agencies, right? You, I can say he was an FBI director. It's mm -hmm. a very public knowledge now. He said either you're hacked or you just don't know about it, oh, right? So that's a scary feeling which at least never lets me rest, uh, you know, uh, with 100% confidence. So, you know, uh, a lot of us believe in that, right, that whatever you have online is susceptible. So the smaller companies, at least you spoke about right tools, they have a tool, which is usually an antivirus. Diva, if you could explain to us why an antivirus is outdated in terms of an endpoint security solution and what does uh, something like S1 offer that an antivirus doesn't? But the reality is uh, antivirus is pretty antiquated, right? <laughs> uh, it's fossilized technology, uh, I think built for a very different world. Uh, and I think to what both of them alluded, uh, security uh, has always been a cat and mouse game, which basically means that you build a great tech and they're going to figure out how to how do I break this tech, right? And uh, to be fair, antivirus did a damn good job back in the 2000s, right? Even up to 2010s maybe. Until when the, the tech cyber tech companies realized, let's take this battle that is ahead and move to the cloud to defend. Uh, but the reality is, today, if companies are using antivirus to defend themselves, it's almost akin to kind of uh, you know using knives and swords mm -hmm. as against what AdWords is using, which is really missiles and drones. That too in a street fight, you are never going to win, <laughs> right? So hence, you need to look at platforms that are, uh, you know, that can provide you some amount of autonomous uh, capabilities mm -hmm. that help you prevent, detect, respond and remediate actually in machine time, machine speed and real time. And only those technologies that can provide, you know, these capabilities, that has helped us really kind of one, to his point, reduce a lot of human dependence to almost sometimes cases of 75 to 80 percent, which is really a big deal, right, in terms of how you deploy your resources. Because remember, all the time, these are defenders, right, in real time, right? And I say hunt, look at threats in real time. Only then we believe uh, they really have a, you know, fighting chance mm -hmm. in this uh, war against ransomware. You know, I would love to know your wish list, Hitesh and Bhavesh. He's talked about the, uh, you know, what work is happening on the uh, security front. But uh, when it comes to the kind of functionalities that you expect from your ideal endpoint security solution, what would they be? I think, uh, you know, one obviously is uh, the fact that, um, I mean, if I can have a backup that's an immutable backup, um, I think that would be fantastic. Um, you know, there are already a lot of existing technologies um, that secure an endpoint fairly well. Um, I'd like applications to be coded better. Uh, a lot of applications are so messed up. Uh, it's not even funny. And, and applications that run on your endpoints need to be cleaned up. I think a lot of OEMs need to take responsibility for those applications and they pass on uh, malware onto your machines. Uh, so it's not just the malware that you know is coming through emails, but also your SaaS applications and all of that. I think uh, there's some amount of responsibility there. Um, on emails, you need to you know activate so many different texts uh, in order to get it right. But I think what a lot of organizations can do well is even with the current investments, fine tune your configurations. I think a lot of them screw up on not 
fine tuning the existing you've done everything right made all the possible investments uh, i think today it still comes down to having an immutable backup as a last line of defense uh, whether it's on the server side whether it's on the endpoint side ideal functionalities from your endpoint security system what sort of wish list would you like to give diva sure so i do have a wish list but before that i'm sure hitesh is directing and it helps when that person is tech savvy right mm -hmm. so so that's half the battle one and uh, definitely my wish list would include uh, a few things but before that i have a theory right like hitesh was alluding to backup or storage um, i would if i had 100 dollars i'd split it into 3 and the first one would be definitely a tool and diva spoke about that and mm -hmm. and hitesh also mentioned there are uh, companies who have uh, evolved mm -hmm. from the anti virus generation and now they have uh, you know end to end detection response and low dependency on uh, humans mm -hmm. the second uh, investment the second part of that investment goes into backup and storage air gap according to me is still not uh, you know evolved it's just a theory in my mind and uh, still having a very solid backup strategy will help you and the third wish list would be invest in people these are the guys who are clicking on the free amazon shoes or or responding to your electricity bills getting uh, or your electricity getting cut off so so train users common sense of course is never common but you can invest one third into user training doing mock tests mm -hmm. from a tool perspective the wish list definitely uh, again uh, it should be agnostic it should be ideally agent less mm -hmm. it should be uh, on any form factor as effective as it is with minimal resources so so there are there have been instances post covid where i won't name but we had to uninstall certain uh, endpoint or a uh, anti virus just because it was hogging so much of resources mm -hmm. and and that's one thing which you know uh, owning the even the desktop strategy as a cio uh, i wouldn't like that right uh, so it has to be a light agent ideally agentless and then of course like deva said automate a lot of it which which helps in reducing the dependency and of course it's a multi layered strategy not just endpoint mm -hmm. but other uh, tools and technologies within the gamut of security also it and no longer are the days that it's only northwest north south traffic right yes. the lateral uh, movement east to west is also equally concerning well, even traditional epps are absolutely outdated and where does next gen endpoint security now score over everything else that's a good question right because i think what uh, cisos and defenders need to really operate at the level of uh, you know very high signal to noise ratio how does it matter five things right primarily it helps reduce false positives so then they spend time looking at the right problems to solve right two is highest detection rates right basically you don't miss anything right third is of course uh, you know uh, make sure that there are zero delays when you see something right which primarily means machine speed response more importantly also is zero config changes which means that the teams are not grappling with rewriting codes and scripts to the point you mentioned where you can depend on automation to kind of reduce how much human intervention is required and uh, most importantly also make sure that the platform is able to see everything right if you're able to provide all of these right in a manner that does not overload performances right in a manner that can keep itself updated and automated in real time i think we have a we kind of solved most of the problems that today's cisos grapple with with outdated or today's endpoint uh, security you know they also spoke about company culture apart from the technology so i would love to understand from the two of you how can leaders of security such as uh, the two of you how do you effectively engage with stakeholders both local and external to ensure a comprehensive integration of information security within your organizations I think half the battle is won since covid and I'm a, I don't know about Hitesh but I'll let him comment when your board your ceo and the top leadership is fully aware abreast of all the uh, changes that are happening in the threat landscape half your battle is won how we engage with the stakeholder now is with complete transparency right um, and again uh, it all starts with a mindset of being secure first and once these leaders acknowledge and understand 
and and even uh, media media houses like yourself they are helping right so they publish stories of course uh, with confidentiality but but th those stories give a segue for us to start the boardroom conversation and learning from others mistakes thank god it's not us from whom others are learning but we learn from the industry and that's where uh, having somebody who is completely tech savvy or or focused on security helps and i've seen there are uh, again in banking which my previous industry so i think uh, you know over and above what bhavesh mentioned one of the things we've started also doing at the boardroom level is uh, we've now started having war room sessions within the boardroom you know so they actually are given a situation where you've been hit and how does everybody react to that do they pick up the phone and call me first or do they call up someone else you know when when something's gone wrong uh um, do they know who's what is the right kill chain in terms of public communication in terms of you know how to contain the event how to you know recover from it and all of that have you got those strategies in place are people following the right mm -hmm. pattern i think another thing which i even mentioned recently at another conference is that one of the things every cso and cio should do is go and meet up with the cso or the cio of an organization who's been hit the number of complications that are there when you get hit with ransomware or when you get hit when you're in an incident the learnings for anyone are just they're just out of the i mean it's just completely uh, unheard of right you you come into situations which you've never faced in your entire career like you know you guys said earlier security cannot exist in silos you really need to break them down even across industries also hitesh when you're choosing a new technology or security to put in place uh, keeping in mind the sort of regulatory challenges that keep coming in the way what would you look for uh, in a new technology to make sure that it's not going to be outdated or you don't have to change it immediately i don't think you can get it right every time i don't think you can get it right every time i think you have to be flexible enough and agile enough mm -hmm. to adapt every 2 to 3 years right because the entire landscape shifting uh you can depend on a company uh you know and and uh invest in that solution and maybe realize you know two years later that they've been maybe bought over by a company who has no interest in running it ever again right and we've had those stories in the security industry right where either out there who can't say i won't be bought over right so you've got to be prepared to change them uh you've also got to be flexible enough to uh you know get out of a technology that may have gotten dated mm -hmm. right uh we all had like i said 50% of cases needs to be how fast it can be installed and also gotten rid of mm -hmm. right so you've got to actually add that to your poc cases because uh, e e th that's reality i mean that's we faced it even in the modern technology what i observe is most of the times leadership would want to monetize the investments no longer in security so uh, like hitesh was talking about let's say we have a technology which is becoming dated or you see that it has gaps we are seeing a lot of at least i'm seeing a lot of support where we get to not only do the poc but also absorb the sunk costs right and uh, coming back to the original question i completely believe that uh, having a, a strategy uh, see uh, you can't predict it's like it is said very difficult which tool or technology will survive or or like you said we have seen a graveyard of acquisitions which are there uh, right now by large large players mm -hmm. having a multi layered security approach which i repeat again is the key here right so your dependency and again we have a diverse environment like i was saying so we do try out in production not only during poc but we do try out and then we take a punt on the one which we feel uh, is working for you know all the all the areas the four verticals that i was talking about so this approach has always helped it's also one of the key things like uh, hitesh was earlier alluding to the digital transformation happening to enable collaboration now when that is already happening right what do you think about a cloud based endpoint security approach what are the advantages of that well i mean it's it's very obvious right you are anywhere and and i'm getting an update or even uh, 
it's no longer the age of signatures, right? So we talked about antivirus, it's dead just because it relied on signatures. We are now talking about zero day attacks. So having a, a, a cloud strategy, especially from a partner side, helps tremendously in ensuring, he, he mentioned like at machine speed and almost in real time. So, so if something is detected in India, for instance, and for a global company like ours based in five different geos, it's a click of a button is again a wish list, but now it's becoming a reality. It's a click of a button where these updated, uh, you know, signatures or updated uh, information is immediately shared and uh, the endpoints or any of your assets are secured. Well, it's good to know that apart from the vulnerabilities in the cloud, there's also de defense innovation happening in it. Absolutely. Hitesh, what have you observed? Um, I think, uh, you know, how the new tech is moving is also uh, over and above, you know, your endpoint protection, you have MDR and XDR that's getting coming on top of it, right? I think uh, that's helping in a big way uh, because it kind of takes the load off you. And that is something that we do is, and, and a lot of companies are losing out on that aspect is that you may have cloud connected protection, but at a point in time, can you also have a disconnected uh, protection approach? Uh, because there is always going to be uh, 60 to 70 percent of manufacturing, pharma, and all of these industries which cannot have everything cloud connected, right? Um, it's edge devices, it's endpoints, it's a lot of those, right? Edge servers, um, and and in that kind of a situation, you've got to figure out: Can I be 90 to 95 percent there? Uh, through a, you know, through an alternate channel, not necessarily with the endpoint being connected, um, and and so it's a strategy that uh, is a bit of a pain and has to be implemented right. But uh, it can be done. But unfortunately, all the providers in the market today are not providing that approach, and uh, yeah. So I think that's an area that needs. I think it's really about focusing on. Uh, the, the scene of the crime, right? At the scene of the crime. And uh, alluding to the example you gave, cloud is great, but cloud also has its limitations, right? And a lot of tech, cyber tech companies who took the power of the cloud, right? Especially with the adage of 1, 10, 60 and whatnot. I think today find themselves a little, uh, you know, discomforted, right? Given that uh, the COVID showed us the last mile connectivity was so difficult sometimes, right? Especially in a country like ours where geos are spread and it's, we don't even have 4Gs in the last mile. Uh, so there needs to be an ability, right, for the agent, for the platform to really empower itself to even in a disconnected mode to be able to deliver the same efficacy, the same speed with the same accuracy, right? And uh, that cannot be possible with the traditional signatures that we depend on because they get bloated, they are, you know, they, they, they hog machine uh, performance. And hence you needed to use something completely differentiated and that is the DNA that I think Central One had almost 10 years back to look at machine models, right? Look at uh, behavioral engines, right? Within the agent to say, hey, I don't need to be connected to the cloud. I don't need to be checking onto the cloud every second for me to be judging if this behavior is malicious or that if it's false positive, right? I think that's the differentiation that we believe uh, today market. I agree to the last point. Having cloud and having an offline feature. And by the way, of course, S1 has a leadership in AI, AI being the most uh, prevalent uh, technology now. So they, had, they do have a leadership and an advantage there because they were probably one of the first companies to have an AI and ML based uh, offline. Mm -hmm. And to Hitesh's earlier point too, I've seen a lot of open source being used across companies, especially uh, Linux is a OS of choice, right? And having a tool which supports not just your traditional uh, Windows OS, but also Linux is, is again an added advantage, which I feel uh, uh, Diva and his team has. If I can just sure, add in, right, uh, based on my conversations with a lot of uh, government and public sector uh, tech leaders, right, remember they are almost another 30-40% of the country's tech infrastructure. I mean, to his point, the entire critical infrastructure, everything that we use is basically run by these departments and uh, they are very, very clear, right, they are very clear that given the geopolitical, you know, tensions and changes that have happened so fast in the last 3-4 years, uh, it's every country needs 
data mm -hmm. to be kept within its sovereign you know boundaries and that's where really the concept of not just uh, you know being able to provide a powerful on prem uh, technology because that's what most governments today are on and they will continue to be on for a, for a long long time but also to even if you did have to use a cloud that cloud had necessarily to be in the same sovereign boundaries that the country's critical infrastructure is operating in because god forbid the rules change and suddenly you have all this thread data and inter data but you cannot touch them because mm -hmm. it's no more clickable because it's it's elsewhere absolutely jiva you know this conversation is much like the cloud in that it's limitless but uh, to take a keyword from him it's also been a very layered conversation uh, it's been very educational for me of course uh, and like s1's defense system this is an online conversation but now we do have to take it offline unfortunately our times up but thank you so much for joining us today it was a uh, fantastic listening to all of you and do continue to keep watching our show for more such uh, extended and informative conversations <laughs>